right, hello everyone. My name is Bianca Brooks, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Tamike. And how do you pronounce your last name? Ogugua. Ogugua. Now, what does Tamike mean? Uh, well, Tamike. Well, Tamike. Um, well, some people say Tamike, especially like um, back in my Chicago days. We get to that later, but all of them used to pronounce my name Tamike. So it just rem reminds me of um, back in the day when I was um, pretty much first starting out. But um, my first name means uh, to thank God in uh, Igbo. That is the language that my parents um, speak. That is the tribe um, that I am from. Um, simply means uh, thank God or thank him. Um, and it's funny because when I talk to other Nigerians that happen to be uh, Yoruba, they're like, that's a Yoruba name. That's a Yoruba name. And I'm like, I'm Igbo, though. I don't know, you know. Um, and, um, of course, my last name means to um, have um, to be compassionate or, uh, you know, to have compassion, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you speak Igbo? A little bit. Oh, a little bit. Nice, nice. I know a few phrases. I'm not fluent in anything like that, but, you know, I always like to try to greet other Nigerians by saying, like, Kedu, and I'll be like, and they'll be like, Kedu? I did. Yeah, Kedu, you know. Uh, so, like, if we were meeting um, for, like, the first time in a couple of days or, or, or just, you know, seeing, seeing someone for the first time for the day, we say, Kedu, and then you would respond, I did my. You know, yeah, so it's hello, and hello, how are you? You know, that sort of thing, so, yeah. Okay, I'm Haitian, we say sac passe. Sac passe, oh yeah, so yeah, y'all are cousins. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, you're cousins, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So, have you ever been to Nigeria? Unfortunately not. No? No, not yet, no? it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, Nigeria I know. Nigeria's beautiful. I know, I know, I see the pictures, I talk to my family all the time. On, um, you know, on, on my dad's side, especially. Um, we stay in contact, you know what I mean? So I see pictures and all the celebrations, and uh, I'm, I'm going to get there. One of these days, I'm going to get there. Nigeria, peace. Um, Niger, you know what I mean? We're we going to get there, but, um, you know, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm just proud, you know, to be of, uh, of a people with, you know what I mean, such a deep, deep history and deep, you know what I mean, deep roots, so. Yeah. All right, so since you were raised here, uh, particularly in North Carolina, North but Carolina. since you were raised in America, d were your parents more Americanized or? Oh, no. No? <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. They, you know, my mom is definitely um, a traditionalist. Like, it's because of my mom I know, like, bands such as, like, um, Osito Osebede and his um, Nigerian uh, sound makers. Um, you know, she never played Fela in the crib, though. I didn't find out about Fela until um, a little later on. But she would always be playing what they call um, high life music. You know, like she didn't play Afrobeat, she played like high life music. So that, and, you know, this big live instrumentation, you know what I mean? So uh, that's what I grew up, you know, um, listening to when my mom played it. But my mom, you know, was very heavily into like R&B and hip hop, you know, so. New Edition was like one of my first um, memories of my mother playing music in the house. The Candy Girl album, as a matter of fact. So, um, you know, shout out to New Edition, man. Part of my childhood, you know. Nice, yeah. nice. Okay, so how did you get into acting? How did I get into acting? Great question. <laughs> um, I was an undergrad at North Carolina A&T State University. Um, Aggie Pride, I, I, I gotta say it, I'm sorry. It's just, it's part of me, man, I gotta represent. Um, so I went to a HBCU um, called North Carolina a t State in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, I was a communications major at the time. And as part of the coursework, I had to take a speech class, and there were a bunch of theater majors in that speech class. So that's pretty much how I got exposed to the environment of being in the mix with like other artists that were constantly like creating on an everyday basis. So when I went to the speech class, all the theater students like just would be jumping in out of characters and like doing scenes and skits uh, for class assignments. And I was like, I want to do that. And uh, so um, the next semester I took an acting for our majors class. And um, subsequently, I uh, changed my major the following semester and pushed my graduation date back an entire year because you know, I found my calling and this is what this is what it was. Okay. 
Okay. That's actually very interesting that you went to school in North Carolina because a lot of people, when they want to become actors, they go to Juilliard or NYU Tisch or, you know, mm -hmm. some other school. So why didn't you move to New York sooner? Um, you, you, know, you know at the time, you know. Um, you know, I, I don't want to say anything like I didn't know any better because that would just be, like, foolish. But um, I got some solid training. You know, we had a very, very talented department, you know. Um, and I, I was just one of those, one of those people that um, just wanted to improve every day and uh, work hard, you know, because I, I literally, like, didn't know anything about theater, anything about acting. Like, I was one of these people that was like, I'm just gonna do it, you know what I mean? And, um, like the night commercial. Yeah, and just, <laughs> <laughs> right, and just go hard, you know? Um, and, you know, fortunately, um, it worked out for me. Okay. You know, yeah. Well, you said you also spent some time in Chicago before coming to New York, right? Correct, yeah. Um, wow, yeah, Chicago, yeah. So basically, when I graduated from um, from a &T, um, I got recruited to go to a grad school, um, and it did not work out. Um, however, <laughs> I had applied me. <laughs> I mean, it worked out. You're sitting here on this show, so. <laughs> no, um, so no, it didn't work out. Uh, so my plan B was I'm in Chicago. I'm in one of the greatest theater cities on the planet. What I would do is I would get a job during the day and do theater at night. Uh, so that's what I so did. What did you do during the day? Oh my God, so, um, so I um, was a bill collector. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I used to have to You're repeat. One of those. I used to be one of those. Yeah, I used to have to repeat the uh, FDCPA. I believe those are the initials. So basically, there are federal guidelines that bill collectors have to abide by. Otherwise, um, you can get sued. The company you're working for can get sued. It's just a whole, a whole thing. Wait, are, were you the kind who used to show up at people's doors? No, no, no. We call. Oh. Okay. No, 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 no. We call. We call, so. Like, um, dang, you were aggressive out there in the field. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, we call, um, be like, hi, yeah. Um, yes, my name is Tamike, and uh, yeah, we're just trying to get this, this bill situated here for you, see if we can work out something for you. Um, before I go on, I must say that this call um, would be recorded and, um, you, know, under the, you know, and give the whole spiel, you know what I mean? Because by law, you, there are certain things you have to say to start the call. And so, you know, um, I sort of use that as like my, my training in voice because sometimes I would like do different voices and um, you know for lack of feeling uh, redundant uh, you know I go into different characters and then like just get real silly with it you know um, and it was a way to also like use my voice. Um, I, I felt at the time um, in, a, um, in, a, in a meaningful way um, that was aiming toward, you know what I mean, my, my craft. So it, it was, you know, it was, it, was, whew, it was some rough times though. So how do you feel when you look on the news and you see all this devastating news that is happening in Chicago? Um, I mean, there, there's, that, that's a lot to unpack, you know. Uh, Chicago's number, number one, it's a, it's a beautiful city. Architecturally, like, it gets beautiful. However, um, it is cold pretty much like nine months out of the year. And I'm talking about like brick, you know. Um, and I think, you know, the See, weather. you're a real New Yorker now because you said brick. Oh, I was There's saying brick in North Carolina. We were saying that in North Carolina, you know. So, that? yeah, it's all East Coast. Oh. It's all, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the cold affects how people behave because it's literally cold there like most of the year. And then when it does warm up, it gets to the extreme, you know what I mean? Um, you know. But yeah, Chicago's where I earn my stripes though, so you know, it's my, it's my second home. Okay, yeah. well, how do you like New York? Love New York, New York was the goal. New York was the goal. Uh, you know, once I spent um, a certain amount of time in Chicago, I really felt like it was time to expand. And, um, especially if I wanted to do television and film work. Um, at the time, uh, you know, you had to, being either LA or New York now, you know, you got Atlanta that's popping, you got New Orleans that's popping. Um, Chicago has really picked up steam because there were some shows shooting in Chicago, but not the way it is now, you know. Um, but I love New York. I mean, New York is where I really got my grown man on, you know. Um, you know, 
I was able to start a career here, um, develop some uh, relationships. Uh, you know, um, New York is is where you know my my daughter was born. You know, you know. Shout shout out to uh, my daughter Suleika. Daddy loves you. Oh, Suleika is a beautiful name. Wow. Yeah, Suleika. Yeah, she. Um, yeah. Girl, little girl, something else though. So <laughs> she's just like me. It's scary. It, it, it's scary. Um, but it, it's a beautiful experience being being a father. You know, just helping to you know instill something in another human being, and actually, it's almost like watching your own heartbeat run outside of your body. Like it's like an out of body experience. You know. Um, so if it actually you, sounds a little nerve wracking. It it, it, then you kind it, of it worry is. Because about your kids it, and you, listen, know, you can't keep your eyes on them at all times. Listen, hey, it's 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 a job. You know that's what that's what's required. You know what I mean? Um, so it, you know I'm fortunate to be a dad, and it's, it's a beautiful experience. You know, um, and she's been in the arts practically she, since she was an infant. You know. Um, She's like primarily a dancer. I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, we gonna get that acting and that theater in there at some point. Um, but yeah, she, she's a dancer. Nice. Are yeah. you a dancer? Um, I have, but I am not. <laughs> oh. I'm not. I mean, you know, I did a little, you know, musical work when I was an undergrad. Um, and we used to have to like dance, but like I'm not a dancer. I'm not a dancer, yeah. So if we ask you to bust a move right now, you no. Know. Okay. No. <laughs> so since you do theater, there is a push now for ensemble cast members to be recognized as well. How do you feel about it? I, I honestly don't really have an opinion on that. Uh, I think it would be, it's always great to be, to be recognized for your work. It's always great to be um, acknowledged uh, for the hours that you put in and for the uh, sacrifices definitely um, that we undertake. So, um, yeah, I'm all for it though. I mean, I'm not against it, you know, yeah. All right, so what is your favorite play that you have ever done? Favorite play um, that I've ever done. See, that's a lie. That's a lie of, woo, wow. I can't have just one favorite. Can I have more than one favorite? More than one favorite. Can I just Absolutely. give you like You can have multiple favorites. Like top three or top five or something. Sure. Um number one. So um, you know, we're at we're at the fabulous uh Brick Media Arts in downtown Brooklyn. Uh, directly next door I did um Julius Caesar with uh, Royal Shakespeare and Company and bam, that had to be like my favorite theater job ever. Favorite. I learned so much and um just working with a bunch of black British actors, man, they were at the top of their game. And, and them, like, embracing you is, like, as part of the cast, um, when they're just here for a brief stint, you know, on that tour, uh, I really learned a lot and gained more of an appreciation for Shakespeare um, than I had previously. And, uh, you know... Man, them, those guys were like dynamite. That cast was crazy, um, you know. And I had fun. I got to go on that stage um, eight, sometimes nine times a week, and, um, and do African dance and, and sing and and be a part of this this great story that was um, set in East Africa. You know, um, that was the Royal Shakespeare Company's first time ever with like an all black ensemble. Um, and you know, I was I was part of it. You know, uh, that was that was my my favorite job for so many reasons. Um, so many reasons, yeah. So if they do it again, would you do it again? I would do it again, probably um, a different role. Okay. Probably a different role, but I would definitely do it again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, a lot of you guys, I know you recognize him because he was on Power. Oh. Yes. I, I'm sure you get recognized on the street. Like, are you? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure you get. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, you know, it's nice. Like I said, it's nice to be uh, recognized for your work. Um, you know. Are there ever any days where you're like, I'm not feeling the way I'm looking, and I wish this person didn't notice me? <laughs> um, I haven't had one of those moments yet. But, um, you know, Things going the way they're, they're going, I, I probably will have a moment like that. And I, I'm looking forward to that because that means I'm doing something right. You know, um, but yeah, for right now, I'm just trying to live in the moment and you know, take advantage of, of opportunities as they come. As you know, this isn't an easy game. Like, you know, there's a lot of rejection. And uh, 
you know, I'm not gonna even lie. Sometimes, you know, I, I do experience, you know, periods of like self doubt and, and 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 frustration. I do, you know what I mean. I'm not gonna sit here in front and say that I don't. But then I remember all the blessings that I do have, all, all the things that I have been able to do and accomplish, and um, my wonderful hometown of Durham, North Carolina, that always has my back and roots me on. Uh, I know I have an entire community in North Carolina rooting for me. So you know, to know that you have that kind of support, that that's what pushes me. You know, uh, I, I represent the people that don't have a voice. You know, um, I've been blessed to have a, a platform and uh, to, to speak, you know, about issues and two issues that really affect me and my community. And, uh, so that's what means the most to me. You know, um, so that's why I push so hard and I work so hard uh, so that I can bring attention to, to things that, that matter to me uh, in the community that, uh, that I came out of. Okay, well, how was your time working on power? Oh, my God. Um, it was the best, you know, like the first time um, first time that I did the show, uh, I was on set all day with, uh, with Joseph Sakura, who, um, obviously plays Tommy. Um, he's just a gentleman. That's all I can say. He was just a gentleman. Um, he's nothing like his character. That's, and that's what makes it so dope. He's nothing like Tommy. Um, yeah, just, just a super dope guy. And then, you know, he's from Chicago. So, you know, um... Between takes, we like have conversations about, you know, um, our roots to Chicago theater, um, because I was doing a bunch of theater in Chicago, and he uh, obviously was born and raised there and went to school out there. So we knew a couple of people in common and a few other uh, theater companies and stuff like that. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, it's just getting to spend like all day, you know what I mean, with like one of the top characters from the show and just to, to, to glean from and learn from. It, it was, it was incredible, it was incredible. And, um, you know, shout out to uh, Courtney Kemp and, um, and that team for uh, the opportunity. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Now, I actually did work on Power as an extra and they have really great food, so. <laughs> yeah, I know food that, is awesome. I know that was a great time. Yeah, food is awesome, yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, then they called me back for season four. And um, I got to open up the season with, uh, with Amari. And, um, you know, just to hear my voice as the first voice you hear, you know what I mean, um, when I'm ordering ghosts to, you know what I mean, empty his pockets and all that. Um, you know, that was another wonderful experience. Like, Amari never got out of character with me. He was ghosting the entire day with me. You know, and then, you know, between takes, you know, he would tell me things to help my performance when he really didn't have to. So, um, shout out to Amari Harvey, man. That's a, that's a good brother that deserves all the success he's, he's receiving right now. You know, but yeah, man, working on the show is great. And, um, you know, and, uh, you know, um, and, uh, my condolences to that uh, cast and crew for that crew member um, that, that passed away. That was tragic. And, uh, you know. But yeah, I'm just um, looking forward to what they have in store for the upcoming season. But I know right now, you know, they're dealing with, with you know, kind of sensitive, so. All right. Yeah. Well, what has been your favorite television role? Favorite television role? Um, Marsha Mason on, on Star's Power. All right, you said that right. <laughs> Marsha Mason. Um, just a journey, you know, um, just to go from, you know, having a character who's, you know, at first only known as U.S. Marshal, and then, like, they invite me to do the show again, and then they give my character a name, you know what I mean? Um, getting, and, and getting the word from my agent that, yeah, they gave you a name, and, you know, um, here's an updated script, you know what I mean? It was, it was very exciting, you know, to, to be on a show um, of that caliber, because, you know, previously, um, I had just done a bunch of like reenactments on my ID channel and, um, and Lifetime. And, um, so I was like, I felt like I was like the reenactment king for a while until I actually uh, booked Power and Power actually made me SAG eligible. And, um, you know, so I was able to uh, qualify, you know, to become a part of SAG after. Um, you know, so that, that was the blessing, you know. Um, it's also just a reminder that this, this journey, it really is a journey, you know what I mean? Like, it's really steps 
there's no shortcut to this. Like, you got to pay your dues, you know. And, um, and hopefully people just respond to the work. Okay. So do you prefer film and television or theater? Whatever I'm working on at that moment. And if I'm happy and I'm working and, um, you know, I'm making a living, um, doing what I love, whatever it is at that moment. You know, like I said, um, I could relive doing doing um, the show with Royal Shakespeare Company again and again and again and again and again. Like, I used to want to do cartwheels all the way to the theater when I got here. Like, it wasn't even... You can do cartwheels? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can at least do a cartwheel. Nice. But I won't... Not on camera here, but I can do them. Well, no, you're all mic'd up and everything. And then we <laughs> want the camera to knock over. And we're like, dang, we cannot invite Tommy right, Kim back right, and he keeps right. ruining our equipment. I know, right? I know, right? Be kicking stuff over. Yeah. yeah. That, that show really, for me, is, is really what inspired me to, like, keep going and know that I was doing the right thing. So yeah, like I said, we we got power, you know. Um, I really really loved that role. Um, wow, just so much. I remember the very first thing I did on television. I did a reenactment re of um, the Shondell story, just because of the subject matter. You know how that uh, how that affected everyone, you know. Um, and we just wanted to do it justice, and uh, you know. Again, that's when it sticks with me because it happens to be the very first um, television, national television show that I did. Um, it happened to be about Sean Bell, you know what I mean? Uh, a guy who um, senselessly lost his life because of, um, you know, police misconduct. Uh, so so that that's another one. Um, that, there's just been so many moments. You know, there are like certain directors that I was able to work with like in um in readings and other uh, other actors that I that I look up to um that I've been blessed to to work with. So yeah, it's just and just a, just a mix of 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 events that have made this an adventure, you know. Okay. Well, a lot of people have talked about how hard the acting industry is and, you know, sometimes people will audition over and over again and they possibly won't book a role. And, you know, I was even watching some actors' interviews. Some of them, they'll go from being on a major show where they're a main character or a supporting character and then they won't get work for five years later. How do you feel about that? Oh, man, you know, that's the ebb and flow of, of this business, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, and you're absolutely right. You can be hot one minute, and then the next minute, you, you're, you're not, you know, the flavor of the week, as they say, anymore. Um, that's why you got to, you know, got to continue to train, you know. Um, you know, me, um, I've been lucky to have, like, mentors around me to stay on me. Um, like, uh, my mentor, uh, Jerome Preston Bates, who's on Broadway right now with um, American Sun. Um, he's part of that, um, that cast. And every time we meet up, you know, whether or not he's like running lines with me um, to make sure I'm on point for an audition or whatnot, he's always like um, telling me things like, yeah, pay attention like to your diction, watch your diction to me, okay? Um, just little things like that, you know what I mean? Because that kind of stuff can get, uh, get away from you. Um, you know, and I just have so many wonderful people around me that I'm able to learn from, um, you know. Now, what do you feel is the solution for actors? Because obviously, none of us can go five years and not pay our bills. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd be in big the trouble. The solution <laughs> for actors, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have different uh, streams of income coming in. Uh, you know, um, I, I don't know anybody that just, you know, makes money doing one thing. You know, um, like for instance, if you, if you, if you're an actor, I know actors that are models. You know, they make modeling money, so they're able to do that play that doesn't pay. Well, the you, modeling business is not as you know, uh, supportive. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, people. I do know actors who do model as well, but right, that is just like that. You might not book. You might go on a go see. You might not. Book oh yeah, it's true. True indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True indeed. True indeed. But, um, but what I'm saying is. Um, you know, you have more than one way to make money. You can't solely just rely on, on the acting. You know, um, you have actors that also write, you know, and become playwrights and screenwriters. Um, you know, some branch out into uh, directing, you know. Uh, 
So it, it just depends on where your um, where your strengths are. But yeah, um, but you know they say the average like millionaire has seven different streams of income. Oh. You know, so you know most wealthy people they don't just make money doing one thing. They have their hands in several things or in several industries to keep you know keep money coming in. So that's that's the key. You know. Um, to not just just rely on, rely on acting, like create some kind of business for yourself. Creating your own work, yes. Yeah, creating your own work as well, definitely, yeah. So, do you write or? Uh, I I actually produced um, one of the last films I was in. Actually, so um, I'm in a film called called Voice of Reason, and uh, I actually just won uh, Best Actor for at the um, Atlantic City Center Fest, Down Beach oh, Film nice, Festival. Nice, um, nice. Yeah, and uh, I just felt like at that time I needed a vehicle to show um, more of what I could do. Uh, so I found an investor to invest in uh, into a film and um, we shot it and, um, you know, I hired myself. So you're absolutely right. Yeah, you, you hire yourself. I hire myself <laughs> and then I hire um, my good buddy, um, Jamil Mangan, uh, who, who knocked out his role, which made me um, a lot better. You know, so, um, yeah, so I share that award with that, that entire cast, Jamil and um, Isaiah, Isaiah uh, Chambers, uh, who was from London. He actually flew in, young man from London. Um, it really helped us out tremendously, uh, you know. So I, I shared the award with them because they they made me uh, that much better. Nice, yeah. nice. Do you have any upcoming projects? Uh, yeah. So um, I just wrapped um, a film called Caviar, um, which is sort of like a crime thriller based on some, um, you know, some some you know some some Russian mafia. Kind, kind of, you know, kind of business. So, you know, we're looking for that in 2019 to drop. Um, I just shot, like, um, a music video with a very popular uh, hip-hop artist. I don't know when that's going to come out. Um, so just did that. I uh, also have a web series called Effed Up and Fabulous, um, written and created by my girl um, Kylie Turner. Um, so those, so those, those are just a, uh, a few of the things that are gonna be dropping. Oh, you're a busy man. And uh, yeah, I'll try to be. Yeah. <laughs> to be well, yeah. we're happy to see that you stay working. All right, is there anything else that you would like to share with us? Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming yeah. on the show. Yeah. And how can we keep in contact with you? Keep in contact with me. All right. Um, so on uh, Instagram, um, my name is Tomike OG. So that's T O M I K E O G. Uh, that is the easiest way to contact me on Instagram. Um, I'm also on Twitter at uh, Tomike Lee. That's T O M I K E L E E. And on, on Facebook, uh, uh, Tomike Ogugwa. So those are the three primary ways you can get in contact with me. Oh, that was four. Three? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I look forward to hearing from you and um, engaging with you and interacting with you and it's, uh, you know, let's work. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And guys, make sure that you subscribe to youtube.com slash trading photos and you can subscribe to my personal YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Bianca Brooks.